Hey folks, you might have seen some really exciting and cool footage from the Insta360 X3 camera and wondered if it makes sense to use this as your primary device for filming an entire travel vlog. My wife and I actually had this experience twice on two trips back to back. We, we use this device as our primary camera for getting all the footage for two trips. One was to Cancun and one was to Las Vegas. I'm going to share with you our experience and show you some examples and side by side comparisons so you can judge for yourself whether it's the right device for you. Uh, but I can tell you that we're not going to be doing this uh, on our future trips. In fact, I'll show you an example right now by stretching this to the same angle that the phone is getting a video right now so, yeah, so that you can see the difference. So what should be looking like this is going to end up looking like this. As you can see, my face has lost some clarity and detail, but you can do some cool effects with it like this. But at the end, you can judge whether it's good enough to be the primary device for your footages. Let's first start from all the positive points. With this camera, you can create cool effects like this where it seems like the camera is chasing the motorboat and you're sailing into infinity. You can capture romantic moments without having someone around you to film you. You can capture a full perspective of all the movements and activities of a location in a frame without using a drone, although the quality and details aren't ideal for really capturing the scene the way you want it to. It lets you do some fun stuff and look for the best opportunities to use the tiny planet feature. Here you can see us driving next to the beach in Tulum, Mexico, and this one's in the Cenote Corazón del Paraiso, also in Tulum. You can make cool, fluent perspective videos like this one to show the atmosphere you're in, but again, I'm not sure if the quality is what you would want to post in your vlog. So it does have all these capabilities, but the question is, can you actually use it to film a travel vlog you can proudly share? Take this footage as an example. We're walking in the streets of Tulum. I honestly don't think this video quality is what you would expect to see in a vlog filmed in 2023. In our case, we had no choice but to upload our Yucatan vlog like this because we had no idea it was going to turn out this way, so we had no choice but to use the footage we had. And don't even dream about using it in low light conditions, because no matter how much you tune the settings, in practice, it will not turn out the way you expect it to. I actually spent a lot of time watching tutorial YouTube videos on how to tune the settings for low light conditions, but in the end, they all turned out completely unusable. I'm glad we had some phone videos of the party to use instead. This one is filmed using my phone in the exact same rooftop bar in downtown Tulum. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison in a different location. This one's at our party hostel in Cancun. By the way, the nice thing about this review is that all the comparisons and examples are based on actual first-hand experience and were not originally filmed with the intention of comparison. So it gives you a more authentic feel of what you can actually expect if you take it on your own journey. And even in perfect daylight, the details still don't turn out the way you'd expect from a state-of-the-art camera. I filmed this Mayan ritual both on my phone and with the Insta360 X3 from the exact same spot and you can clearly notice the difference in detail. And this one is at the beach in one of Tulum's boutique hotels. Here's another bad example of using it at night. We were trying to film our entry into the colorful city of Valladolid but even though it was placed on the best possible settings for these conditions, the result was unusable, and I instead had to use this phone footage as our introduction to Valladolid. And here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison with a GoPro video in similar lighting conditions, and decide which one looks like a vlog you can be proud of. All the examples I showed you so far were from our Mexico trip. I also wanted to share some examples from our Vegas trip which happened right before the Mexico trip. We took this trip specifically with the intention of filming the insides of all the hotels and creating a vlog showing all the countries that are replicated in Las Vegas. However, since the lighting conditions in the hotels were not ideal for Insta360, our vlog did not turn out as planned. For example, this is the Japanese Garden and Bellagio Hotel. And as you can see, uh, the image quality doesn't do justice to the beauties that are set up in this garden. 
We were really disappointed when our exported video turned out this way, so I tried every tip I could find online to try to get a better quality out of it. I tried the Insta360 Studio on a laptop, I tried exporting it at different qualities and different settings and conditions, but at the end this is the best I could get. This is the inside of the Paris Hotel Las Vegas which replicates the streets of Paris. As you can see, the whole scene has a lot of noise in it, both in people's faces, in the corners of the buildings, the lightings, and everything. It just doesn't look as pleasant as you would expect. Compare the video you just saw of the Paris Hotel to this footage I got with my phone at the Rio Hotel. Here's another example filmed with Insta360, this one's the inside of the New York, New York Hotel of Las Vegas. And once again, we were really hoping for a lot clearer footage of these beautiful New York streets replicated in this hotel, but unfortunately this is the best that we could get. In contrast, you can see the footage we got on our phone walking on the streets, even though the sun has gone down, it looks a lot clearer and sharper. To be honest, after we saw these comparisons, we were so glad that we filmed part of the trip on our phones. And even in very low light conditions such as inside a nightclub, the phone footage still turned out acceptable. Here's another comparison based on the Venetian or Venice of Las Vegas. As you can see, the Insta360 does give you the luxury and flexibility of choosing your frames later on after the fact. And you can focus the frame on your favorite details of the environment without having to worry about it during the trip. However, this convenience does come at a cost and as you can see, the frames are much clearer on the phone. This one was one of my least favorite outcomes. It's the botanical garden in the Mirage Hotel. The tropical vibe that we had hoped to capture in this hotel doesn't look nearly as pleasant as we had hoped due to the blurriness of the screen. In addition, the video doesn't really let you embrace the atmosphere when people's faces look so unnatural in the video. At the end of the day, I feel like a lot of the cool footage and amazing videos and impressive effects that you see on videos online that have been filmed with the Insta360 are in collaboration with Insta360. There's a lot of sponsored videos out there. They're filmed in very controlled and ideal lighting conditions. They're professionally edited to make it look the way you see them. But if you're a casual travel blogger like us and want to have a primary device throughout your trip and live in the moment, I'm not sure if it's the best choice for you. But you can judge based on the examples you saw in this video. And we would also love it if you check out our channel. So we hope you enjoy our videos and don't forget to subscribe.